For nearly the last 25 years, the Toyota Tundra has been a very important part of Toyota's North American lineup. Remember, when this truck was first introduced back in the year 2000, it was literally one of the only Japanese competitors out there in a segment that is dominated by the big three from Detroit. Now, back in 2022, Toyota finally gave the Tundra the full redesign that it needed, moving it to an all-new frame, introducing two all-new powertrains, giving us a new interior and a new design language. And for 2024, the Tundra stays pretty much the same, but Toyota has made some key changes to the truck in order to keep it fresh among all the new competitors out there. Now, as you can see this week, we are driving the latest version of the Tundra. This, one, this model here is the 2024 Tundra Platinum, a trim level that I actually haven't had a chance to test out for a full week. It slots in between the Limited and the Capstone in terms of luxury. And for those of you who are looking for a capable half-ton truck out there that doesn't have an American badge, how does the latest version of the Toyota Tundra stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the exterior styling differences for this platinum grade versus the other trims of the Tundra, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, the Tundra offers a choice of three different powertrains, technically two, with two different tunes. You can take your pick when you need either just uh, a gas-only engine or a hybrid version that Toyota calls iForce Max. Now, underneath the hood of my tester, I do have the optional iForce Max hybrid powertrain. This is actually a $4,000 upcharge in the Tundra Platinum family if you guys want this powertrain. And it is available in either rear-wheel drive or the company's part-time four-wheel drive system, which also includes a low-range transfer case. Now, you guys should be pretty familiar with this engine by now. It's the company's 3.4-liter twin-turbocharged direct and port injection V6. Remember, this engine replaces the old 5.7-liter V8. It is augmented by a a 36 kilowatt electric motor that is sandwiched between the engine and the 10 speed ASIN automatic transmission. Now, without the hybrid powertrain, uh, this engine on its own delivers 389 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. With the electric motor, it adds about 48 more horsepower. So, total combined output is 437 horsepower, and torque is very impressive at 583 pound feet. Those, those are more or that power figure is more versus what you get in the F-150 power boost. Not much more, but it is more power. So again, it is bragging rights for Toyota. Like I said earlier, a 10-speed auto. Uh, my tester here has the company's part-time four-wheel drive system. You can get a locking rear diff if you guys get the TRD off-road package, which is newly available on the platinum grade. Same thing with a three-inch suspension lift. Fuel economy with this model, this is the hybrid. It's rated at 19 in the city, 22 on the highway. That is a little bit better versus the TRD Pro that I tested a few months ago. Uh, this truck is ready to run on regular grade gas. It has a massive 32.2 gallon fuel tank. So you're looking at around 600 miles of range on a full tank of fuel. That is among the best range you're gonna find in the segment. It's literally double the range versus a lot of these electric trucks out there. Uh, and in terms of performance, the last time we tested this truck, we got zero to 60 in just under six seconds. We'll, we'll test it out again when we get this vehicle out on the road. It has a top speed of around 107 miles an hour. And this vehicle is ready to tow, this particular trim is ready to tow a maximum of just over 11,000 pounds. It'll carry just under 1,600 pounds of payload in the bed. And as this truck sits, because of the hybrid battery pack, it has a 1.87 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydrate, nickel bell hydrate battery underneath the rear seat. Uh, this truck weighs in at just over 6,000 pounds. So it is among the heavier trucks out there in the segment. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling of this platinum grade, which for 2024, Toyota basically gave it no changes in terms of the exterior. There are a couple of different tweaks between the trim level. There's also a new 1794 limited edition model that they also showed uh, a few months ago at the Texas Truck Rodeo, and I believe it was in Dallas. Uh, but this model here is the platinum grade. It has its own unique front fascia. It's painted in this really beautiful shade uh, of color called Lunar Rock. It's almost like a gray greenish color to it. It looks fantastic, it's actually a free color. The Platinum kind of gets this kind of satin chrome, dark satin chrome grill with the blue accent to Toyota logo. They are kind of shying away from that logo. It's an older design. I'm surprised Toyota hasn't, had, hasn't put their new Beyond Zero badge on this truck. You can see the grill is kind of in your face. Some, some people actually say they prefer the front fascia of the Sequoia because the Tundra's grill is a little bit larger. I kind of agree with that. You can see it has Tundra here at the front of the fascia and then you can see there's LED fog lights. Uh, the headlights, you can see full LED. These are the premium LEDs that you get standard on the Platinum. You can see it includes a sequential LED turn signal, LED daytime running lights, LED low and high beams, which is nice. You have some functional vents here, more functional vents here. 
Uh, and then down under here, you can see no tow hooks like you would get on the TRD Pro. Uh, you can also get this car, of course, with a three inch suspension lift. This model here without it has around eight and a half inches of ground clearance and Toyota now offers the TRD off-road package, which basically changes out the grill uh, with all, with, or by removing the satin chrome with kind of like a uh, blacked out finish, which definitely for me, I'd probably go with that. Now moving around the side profile, you can see this particular model that I'm showing you here is basically the cab configuration that most people buy. It's got the four full-size doors, so it's a Crew Max model. It has the big back seat, and it has the five and a half foot bed. You can also get a longer six and a half foot bed. Toyota offers up to an eight foot bed if you guys go for the double cab, which is the kind of like a extended cab but this truck at 233 inches long with a 147 inch long wheelbase it's about the same size as something like a ford f-150 a gmc sierra and a ram 1500 now you can see the wheels these are the wheels that are exclusive to the platinum grade it's got a beautiful dark graphite gray finish with the multiple spoke design it's a 20 inch wheel wrapped in a 265 by 60 r20 bridgestone dweller uh, tire the brake rotors are nearly 14 inches in diameter in the front 13.8 uh, six inches in the rear and then you have a multi or a double wishbone independent front suspension with a live axle in the back with coil springs my tester is missing the adaptive variable suspension or the rear air suspension again this model here has around eight and a half inches of ground clearance because it doesn't have the trd off-road package or the three inch suspension lift which is a new feature for 2024 you can see the fender flares are or the wheel arch trim is black painted the trd pro model is going to be about an inch and a half wider versus this trim this little badge here show tells everybody you have the iforce max hybrid power powertrain uh, and then you can see the mirrors uh, they are power folding uh, with an integrated turn signal there's a full 360 camera there's a platinum badge here uh, and then my tester also has the power retractable running boards the platinum trim also comes standard with the big panoramic glass roof that also opens up that is typically an optional charge on the limited that's the reason why this truck trim level is about 10,000 more than the limited and then you can see moving from this angle here the tundra has a very conventional look to it but it also looks modern it looks sophisticated the five and a half foot bed is certainly usable but if you guys plan to actually put more stuff you might want to go for the six and a half foot bed you can see the tail lights this is part of the premium leds where you have a sequential led turn signal back here uh, this design was also adopted by the new tacoma which i should be getting in a couple months to do an updated full review uh, it's ha it has tundra stamped in the back of the bed you can see there are cameras back here to go with the digital camera review mirror and the full 360 camera the tow package is included on this trim and then unlike some competitors unfortunately toyota doesn't offer any of that multi-pro function tailgate where it has like different designs to the tailgate instead the tailgate itself is just damp so push this button here the tailgate will you know fall down it doesn't have a power closing feature but you can see my tester has this little pop out power extending or, or like step right here which helps you get into the bed all tundras come with a composite bed which doesn't really uh, which means you don't necessarily need to get any kind of bed liner, but you can see here, I mentioned earlier, the payload is just under 1,600 pounds. It certainly is a very wide and usable bed, um, but uh, you do get a little inverter here. It's just a 400 watt, so compared to something like the F-150, uh, which offers like a full like mobile charging station in the back, the Pro Power on board, this is where Toyota really needs to kind of update that to kind of give us, give us something similar, especially considering the fact that it does have a larger battery pack because it's a hybrid. There's LED lighting in here, some tie down hooks and whatnot but again the f-150 just kind of offers a little bit more usability for those of you who actually plan to do truck things uh, at the work at your work environment whereas the tundra is a little bit more conventional so on the exterior, there are very subtle differences to show that this is the platinum trim, but what about the interior? Before we step inside, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Toyota Intelligent Access key. Uh, it is very much just kind of a generic key fob. It has the Toyota logo here. I'm surprised it's not actually blue accented. I'm surprised there's no Tundra badge on the back of, the toy of this key, but it has your usual buttons here for lock, unlock. You can also pop open the tailgate and activate the panic function. Toyota does offer a phone as a key function if you have access to the Toyota Connect services app and uh, the key fob also offers remote start from the fob you have to push the lock button here three times and then hold it on the third try until it starts up so that's great the toyota offers that of course from the factory now coming up to the truck you can see the door handles are very traditional uh, there's a little area here where if you touch that that'll lock the door for you this car doesn't offer a walk away auto lock or unlock feature that's something toyota doesn't do still i'm hoping they eventually will add that touch the back of the door handle you can see the mirrors will unfold and that will unlock the door for you now you can see those power deploying running boards are a nice touch for those of you who are short like myself to help you get into this truck and you can see the interior i hope you guys like a black interior because this is your only color option when you guys go for the platinum now these are a real uh leather interior it's not quite as soft as the semi-aniline leather that you get in the capstone but you can see here it has some contrasting blue stitching 
blue perforations in the actual seats themselves. They look nice. The seats adjust in like 12 different ways. And you have two person memory over here. The seats are also heated and ventilated in the front and heated and ventilated in the rear. So that's standard equipment on the Platinum. Those features are 10, they tend to be optional on the limited trim. The door panel you can see has some real leather stitching with the contrasting blue. You have some ambient lighting here underneath some of the door panels and on the dash. Uh, real leather stitching over here where your elbows are dressed. The door panels or the window controls, they are one touch for all four. They have the typical Toyota high quality. They're also backlit uh, and you have your usual controls here for your mirrors, your door lock controls, more storage over here, hard touch plastic down here with more additional storage. And then my tester also has the upgraded JBL sound system, which sounds good. Not quite as good as some of the best that I've heard from of course, Ford and Ram with their latest trucks. Now getting inside this Tundra, you can see as I pull myself in, it definitely gives you that commanding view of the road with that big hood and the big hood bulges to show that this has again, the bigger or the more powerful engine. As I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built on the new TNGA F architecture that it also shares with the Series 300 Land Cruiser. Now, starting the truck up, you can see the start stop button is right where you'd expect it to be. And because it's a hybrid, you can hear it doesn't have a traditional starter noise. Instead, the engine kind of whirs to life. Sometimes it doesn't actually turn on, it just is ready there. Uh, but most of the times the engine will fire on kind of like as a delayed reaction to the rest of the uh, electronics turning on. Uh, but you can see uh, if you guys go for the hybrid powertrain, you'll get standard this 12.3 inch fully digital customizable display, which definitely looks modern. It looks nice. And then the platinum trim also comes with the big 14 uh, inch touchscreen here with the latest Toyota connected services uh, system. Uh, this was built, of course, in Texas or designed in Texas. It includes wireless Apple CarPlay uh, and Android Auto and over the air updates. You guys have seen me, show, seen me show you guys this system before. It includes embedded GPS via the cloud system. Um, and it also has, of course, your usual information here for audio, phone. You can go into your vehicle information and your settings here. It's relatively easy to use. The graphics are fantastic and it also looks very modern and upscale. And it's the perfect fit in this really big interior. Now you can see the dashboard material on this Platinum includes soft touch with real stitching here on the upper portion here over the instrument panel hood. My tester is missing a heads up display that you can add as an option. Uh, but for, the, for a truck that doesn't have a Lexus badge, you do have a power tilt telescoping steering well, which offers a good amount of adjustability and range. No paddles on the wheel. Uh, you can see the leather has a nice high quality feel with the contrasting blue stitching, which is nice. You have controls to control the screen and to adjust the Toyota uh, safety system 2.5. The horn, it sounds nondescript, but it doesn't sound puny. It sounds appropriate given the size of this truck. And then you can see down here, there's more leather stitching and real leather along with some ambient lighting that you'll find underneath the dash. Some, uh, this almost looks like a titanium alloy look trim, but this is actually just a fake plastic trim. Over the airbag cover here for the passenger side, this is hard touch plastic, which is fine. You're never gonna really touch that area. There's some silver painted plastic over the dashboard vents. And then you can see here, there's dual zone automatic temperature control with heated and ventilated seats. I love the fact that Toyota is still using actual buttons, which is nice. If I push this little button here, you can see it gives you a full 360 perimeter scan. That view to me is a little bit useless, but Toyota has really done a good job with improving the graphics. When I put the truck into reverse, you can see there's a more useful view. It includes trajectory. It includes tow lines, distance markers, rear cross traffic braking, a top down 360 view, and excellent resolution uh, for those of you who, again, who use your backup camera all the time. Uh, down here, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad. This is the older wireless phone charging pad and it doesn't always charge my phone up properly. So uh, right now it's working, but sometimes when I'm driving the truck around, it'll kind of slide a little bit and it'll stop working. I've noticed the newest Toyota systems uh, have a newer wireless charger that actually works a little bit more reliably. Love the fact that you have a volume knob over here, which is nice. This controls the 10 speed auto, which includes a manual and a sport mode uh, in the actual transmission. Uh, your four wheel drive selector is right here. It's a actual knob or dial, whatever, um, or a toggle switch. It goes from too high, four high, four low. There's no automatic setting still. And then your drive mode selector, you can see there's a sport, normal, and an eco mode. If I push the tow haul, I can also put it into a tow haul mode. Um, and you can also, um, uh, adjust a couple of other settings here. If this car had the TRD off-road package, it would also include like a multi-terrain select, which as you can see, this truck is, is lacking that because it doesn't have uh, the TRD off-road package. Open this up, you can see there's cup holders, which 
You can also double up as storage, of course. Electronic parking brake is here. Nice padded center console. There's also a little bit more storage here. I don't particularly love the way this feels. It's a little bit cheap. Also, I can't believe Toyota didn't put any kind of like rubberized material there to keep stuff from rolling around. Down here, it's also not even rubberized, but it's a nice little storage tray. I can kind of slide that open to reveal two USB charging ports, a USB-A and a USB-C push this little button here that opens up the center console entirely. You can see all of my camera gear fits in there. There's also uh, a good amount of storage. There's a little bit of light in there. So that's that's pretty nice. This isn't quite as useful as what you get in the F-150, which has a table that folds out with the shifter that folds down. But again, for those of you who don't need that gimmick, this is definitely gonna offer plenty of storage space. The seats, uh, they are covered in a nice leather material, but the capstone definitely offers an even so more supple leather. But um, for those, again, for those of you who want a lighter color, you're gonna wanna go for a different trim. Um, above me here, you can see big panoramic glass roof that also opens up. So if you want, you can close the shade, which is nice. You can also tilt this up or open it completely. And I love the fact that Toyota does this. Toyota is also the only brand that offers this. So push that, you can see the rear window slides down completely. Um, that is a wonderful feature. I don't know why other brands don't offer that, but I love the fact that Toyota has kept that in the Tundra. For me, that would be a great selling feature. There's a digital camera review mirror, as you can see, uh, where you can also use it as just a traditional mirror or go to the digital part, which is great if you have a lot of people or stuff in the back that's clouding up your view. Uh, but overall, as you can see, uh, the seats, they are wide to accommodate a wider American frame, but they are comfortable for me. I took this vehicle on a longer trip. It's, it was very nice. If I open up the glove box, you can see it goes into the dash. It's uh, not, it's damped, but it's not lined, with felt, not lined with felt. It offers a good amount of storage. Some competitors offer a dual tier storage in the dashboard, the Tundra, however, Sadly does not, but overall, this truck's interior still feels modern. It has great tech features, of course, with Toyota's latest infotainment system. It offers plenty of space, and it also has impeccable build quality. This truck is brand new, and I didn't hear a single squeak and rattle from it. It just feels like it's going to be built, and it'll run for a long time with very little problems. Moving to the back seat of this Tundra Platinum, you can see if you actually need to use this as a family vehicle, you're gonna wanna get the Crew Max body style because as you can see here, this is one of the reasons why a lot of Americans use half-ton trucks as family vehicles. You have just over 41 inches of legroom back here. That is among the best in the segment, although I think some competitors offer like 44 inches of legroom. Uh, the Ram, I believe, is the competitor that offers that much, which again, stupid amount of space. This is practically you know, comparable to something like uh, a Mercedes-Benz S-Class in terms of the back seat space. Uh, rear door panel materials are the same as the front, soft leather stitching, padding right here, lit up window controls, uh, a lot of storage in the door panels. You also get these nice retractable sunshades in this platinum grade, which is a nice touch. And then this seat, as you can see, um, certainly is very, very wide because of the wide body. You can also lift this up, which as you can see, no storage underneath here because that is where the 1.87 uh, watt, kilowatt hour lithium or nickel metal hydride battery lives. If you guys go for the non-hybrid, you'll have a little bit of storage underneath there, uh, which would be nice. Um, these seats, as you can see, they do give you the ability to fold them down if you'd like. And as you can see, there's a little bit of storage underneath here. There's the sub for the JBL sound system. Um, so again, there's a little bit of flexibility in this back seat, but getting back here, you can see there's a grab handle to help hoist myself in. As I get back here and shut the door, you can see this is where I have the front seat to drive and I have tons of legroom. I can stretch out very nicely. The floor is not flat, however, there's a pretty massive hump in the middle here, but the, the truck is so wide, you could easily fit three Americans across here and you'd have enough elbow room to kind of get comfortable. There are cup holders back here. I like the fact that this cup holder area is kind of covered in leather. You have two storage cubbies as well. You have rear seat air vents and you also have, as you can see, heated and ventilated seats in the rear, which is a nice touch. You have two uh, USB charging ports, an A and a C, and then you also have another power outlet here, a household power outlet, which is again, a nice touch. In terms of the headroom space, you can see as I lean back, my head comes relatively close to the ceiling. It's because of this panoramic sunroof. Again, it's eating into the headroom space, which isn't nice. There's also some LED lighting, map lighting back here, uh, which is good. But overall, if you guys need to use this as a family vehicle, like every other vehicle in this segment, the Tundra definitely offers that backseat space that you're gonna need to put full-size adults back here. So here we are back behind the wheel of a 2024 Toyota Tundra. However, this time we are driving a trim level that I actually haven't spent a full week with. I've spent a full week with the Capstone, with the 1794 and a TRD Pro. The Platinum kind of think of it as on the same level as a 1794, but without all of the Texas theme country Western luxury touches. Instead, we have kind of like a Teutonic luxury touches. And this one that they also sent me has the hybrid max powertrain. Toyota actually says that about 25% of Tundra 
sales account are, are the iForce Max hybrid powertrain. So this is a wonderful powertrain to have. It really shows the Toyota is committed to the electrified powertrain space. And the last time I tested this powertrain, I was in the TRD Pro. We got zero to 60 in 5.9 seconds. The quickest time I've gotten was 5.7 in the capstone model. So let's go ahead and see what we can get in this version here. Now to get the best four wheel drive or acceleration time, you actually have to put it into four wheel drive high, which is done via this switch right here. There is no automatic setting. Uh, I have the car in sport mode right now. Um, this model here offers 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we can get here zero to 60 wise. All right, so we're in sport mode. We'll brake torque it. <laughs> this thing is fast. All right, we got 5.9 seconds there. Again, that's with it in four wheel drive where you're not supposed to really lock this thing in four wheel drive because uh, it is a part-time four wheel drive system. When you turn, you'll notice it kind of bucks and it kind of binds a little bit because Toyota doesn't offer a full-time four wheel drive system. But again, if you want that quickest time, you have to put it into four wheel drive high. I really, really wish Toyota would offer uh, a four wheel drive automatic setting, a full-time setting. They don't offer that on any trim of the Tundra. So I basically have to switch it back into two high uh, and that will, again, put it back into its rear wheel drive setting. Um, this is the best mode to drive when you're just driving around on paved roads, uh, on off road is and when you're off the pavement is where you only wanna be driving it in four wheel drive. But again, 5.9 is pretty good. This is about the same time that I got in the TRD Pro. I was expecting it to be a little bit faster. Let's try it here really quick um, just to see if we can get another consistent time. This time we won't break target, we'll just floor it. I have it in two wheel drive mode this time. The 10 speed shifts at around 5,500 RPM. We got 6.5 seconds there, zero to 60. So uh, very impressive performance. If you brake torque it and put it in four wheel drive, you'll, you'll sneak it in just under six seconds. Those times are among the quickest, if not average in the segment. I mean, the uh, F-150 uh, hybrid, the power boost model, that one can probably do it a little bit faster than this vehicle, but uh, this is gonna keep pace, of course, with the GM vehicles with the 6.2 liter V8. The Ram, of course, with its 5.7 liter Hemi, that time is going to be plenty fast. And I suspect the uh, non hybrid version is probably gonna be about a half a second, half a second slower. Now, when you have the vehicle just driving around in normal, I'm gonna actually switch the drive mode selector here back into its normal setting. This is where the car or the truck basically drives how you'd expect it to be. I mean, it's a big half ton truck. Uh, my tester is missing the adaptive variable suspension or the rear air suspension. And you can also get the platinum nowadays or for 2024 with the TRD off-road suspension. And you can also get it with a three inch suspension lift. So my tester doesn't have any of that. It just has the standard steel springs uh, where you have a coil spring set up in the rear now. It's a live axle, but you also have a double wishbone suspension in the front. These 20 inch wheels do look good and they're exclusive on the platinum gray. This truck feels big and it is big. It weighs in at just over 6,000 pounds. The steering is, you know, quick for a truck, um, but you feel a lot of lean in the suspension. So if you're looking for, you know, a sporty driving truck, you know, obviously you don't really find that in this segment of vehicle, but it is competent. This truck feels really easy to drive. It also feels very, very solid when you go down the road. It just feels like you're driving a vehicle built for the American truck segment. And I love the torque that you get from the hybrid max powertrain. You put your foot down at low speeds, the electric motor is adding almost 50 horsepower and nearly 190 pound feet of torque. And that really fills in the gaps that you feel with the turbo lag between that 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. I mean, where there would be turbo lag, you feel that electric motor adding its additional power. And then you can also see it in the graph here. It's adding in that electric motor assist. It doesn't really have enough power on its own to kind of deliver you that extra or that electric only acceleration. I mean, it can power the truck at, at very, very low speeds at light throttle applications in pure electric mode, but Toyota really needs to beef up the, you know, power figures of the electric motor to give us more electric motor to, uh, performance. I would love to see this thing, you know, be able to accelerate a lot more in pure EV mode. That's where Ford kind of has this vehicle beat. Uh, Ford's uh, power boost model does give you more electric only assist, especially at low speeds and the Ford should theoretically get better fuel efficiency as well. But the Toyota system is effective. It gets very good gas mileage on its own. It has very excellent power figures. And then when you just drive the vehicle normally, it has a nice sound to it. It's not quite as loud as the TRD Pro that I last drove, but uh, 
it's got some kind of fake sound that's being pi piped in through the speakers. And it almost sounds like a V8, which is good because a lot of people are sad about the fact that Toyota has discontinued the old 5.7 liter V8. I'm here to say that you won't miss it. This engine sounds good. It's way quicker, way more fuel efficient. And with the hybrid max powertrain, with the hybrid powertrain, it really feels like, you know, the kind of truck that Toyota has needed to put out for so long in the Tundra. It feels modern, finally. It feels sophisticated. It feels powerful. It has that effortless feel. And it also is very refined. This, this truck has a very good ride quality. In fact, I actually like the ride quality the most, I think, of this Platinum grade out of all the other ones that I've driven. Even though I'm missing the adaptive variable suspension, this truck just kind of glides over the road very nicely. There isn't really much in terms of that typical truck shuddering that you get uh, when you have a he an, an empty load in the back of the bed for example. I suspect if you guys option in the adaptive variable suspension, it'll actually improve the ride quality even more. This is pretty much on par with the best that I felt from the Ford F, F series. Now, I haven't had a chance to drive the refreshed F-150, but uh, the ride quality in this truck is good. I still think the Ram 1500 with the air suspension is the best ride quality. That's the only model that offers a full four corner air suspension. Toyota only offers a rear air suspension, uh, part of an option package if you guys want that. But overall, uh, this truck is very solid to me. In terms of driver assistance, Toyota puts their Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 as standard. This truck has active lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control with a traffic jam assistance, automatic emergency braking. It all works fairly well, and it even you know helps to steer you in the lane, although it really doesn't do as good of a job as some of the other systems. For example, if you're looking for like a super cruise function uh, that you get in the GM trucks or Ford's Blue Cruise, Toyota is a little bit behind there. They don't offer that kind of technology yet. Uh, they are working on it, of course, with the Lexus team system, but we don't see anything like that on the Toyota side. Now, in terms of the fuel efficiency, um, I've had a chance to really test out the Tundra in the iForce Max powertrain a lot. The TRD Pro that I tested a few months ago, that got around 17 MPG in mixed driving. The Capstone did around 18. This also did around the same 18 MPG in mixed driving. On the highway, it did get around 22 MPG, which is pretty darn good, actually, uh, for a big truck like this. Now, granted, you are probably going to get a little bit better gas mileage in the F-150 Power Boost, although it's probably only going to be like one to two MPG better. With this massive fuel tank, 32 gallons, you're looking at around 600 miles of range, cruising range. That is fantastic. And I think that a lot of people are going to be very impressed with the fuel efficiency, uh, especially with the real world range. Now, could Toyota do even better there? Sure. I mean, I'd love to see them do a plug-in hybrid version of this, obviously, but you know, that would be, you know, even more complex, even more expensive. But you know, for, you know, after waiting so long for a new version of the Tundra, I have to say, I, I really liked the Tundra when I first drove it about two years ago. I've spent a good deal of time in this truck over the last couple of years in a few other trim levels. I really do feel that Toyota has a very viable option here against the big three, especially if you guys are looking for, you know, top of the line build quality here similar capability, a design that also stands out, and the efficiency and power that you get with this Hybrid Max powertrain. Uh, I just wish that uh, Toyota would expand some of the availability of the features into uh, the lower trims. Like, for example, if you guys want that fully digital display, you have to go for a Max, a Hybrid Max powertrain. Um, some, of the, some of the lower end models of the truck do feel a little bit cheaper, which I haven't had a chance to drive, but overall, this is still one of the best uh, full-size half-ton trucks that you can buy out there, and it also gets one of the best gas mileage out there as well. So even though the Toyota Tundra doesn't exactly sell in the crazy numbers that the big three do with their trucks, Toyota has been, again, ramping up production of the Tundra, and this has actually been a relatively strong seller for Toyota since this new version came out. Last year in 2022, the company moved a little under 105,000 units here in the States. This year, they are on track to do around 150,000 units, which is actually a pretty good amount. That would make the, this year, uh, depending on, of course, how Toyota does in the last fourth quarter of the year, uh, make this the best-selling uh, model year for the Tundra ever. And it's pretty easy to see why. After spending a full week with the latest version of the Tundra, this is one well-rounded truck. It has a very enticing blend of luxury, capability, technology, and it's also really easy to live with, especially if you guys want something with a Toyota badge. You want something that isn't 
again, the typical American truck that you find in your neighbor's driveway. This platinum grade that I'm showing you here is a really nice balance of everything. Now, me personally, I don't like the fact that the platinum only comes with a black interior. For those of you who prefer that kind of Teutonic look to it, you're going to obviously really like that. But in terms of the interior, I found it to be very comfortable, uh, very spacious, very practical. It has very good tech. I love the 14 inch display with the Toyota audio multimedia interface. I love the iForce Max powertrain with its 10 speed auto. It offers plenty of acceleration and decent fuel efficiency considering the size and the weight of this truck and how much capability it offers. And for those of you, again, who want even more capability, I personally would probably go for the TRD off-road package. That's around another $2,500 extra. And then if you got, guys want even more capability, if you, and you want this truck to look a little bit less wimpy, there's now that new three-inch suspension lift that you can get from the factory. Uh, those two features are gonna cost you around $6,000 extra to add. It's probably a worthy upcharge if you guys want, again, the Tundra to look even more capable and look a little bit more beefy. Now, in terms of pricing, this is where the Tundra got a lot more expensive for the new generation, which kind of that's the case for a lot of new trucks nowadays. Uh, a base version of the Tundra, the SR5 double cab with two wheel drive with the base version of the V6 will come in at just under $40,000. Now, if you guys want the iForce Max powertrain, it's gonna cost you at least $57,000. So almost 20 grand more for the iForce Max powertrain. That's because Toyota only offers the hybrid powertrain on the limited grade. Remember, the iForce Max powertrain is around $4,000 extra. If you guys want four wheel drive, it's around $2,600 uh, $2, extra. This platinum trim that I'm showing you here starts at around 62, around 65 with the hybrid powertrain, around 67 if you guys want it with the hybrid powertrain and four wheel drive. My tester basically has just the power deploying running boards and it comes to a grand total of just over $71,000. I know 71 grand is a lot, but remember a capstone model is gonna be around $10,000 more. The TRD Pro is gonna be around $5,000 more. So if you don't necessarily need the extra off-road capability, you can always just add in the TRD off-road package with that three inch suspension lift. It's probably not gonna be as off-road capable as the TRD Pro, but uh, it is going to be a little bit less expensive. And I also really like just how well balanced the platinum grade is. So if you guys are looking for the new Tundra, uh, I, would, I would highly suggest putting this trim at the top of your list, but really Toyota offers such a bevy of different trim levels to choose from. There's probably a Tundra out there for every everyone's style and of course, everybody's budget. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 Toyota Tundra and this platinum trim. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.